Let's now define what an energy function is. So an energy function is some mathematical algorithm or procedure that inputs the state of a system and outputs the energy. So all the information which quantifies the state of the system and then outputs a scalar value called the energy. So that's specified uh, diagrammatically here. So we have our state and then we put that through an energy function and what it returns is the energy. Okay, so what constitutes the state of a system, which in our case we're mo usually most interested in molecular system. So that can include things like well, we can have molecular coordinates. So as we saw, if there are n atoms, then there are 3n Cartesian coordinates, 3n minus 6 internal degrees of freedom. So those coordinates are an important part of the state of the system, or whatever particles you have which represent your system. We can also have things like the bonded structure. So molecular mechanics, which we're going to get into shortly, you have to specify things like what are the bonds, what are the bond angles, what are the torsion angles, uh, those sorts of things. So the kind of the structure of what your, what your chemical system is, if your model needs that. For quantum mechanics, you don't need that. For quantum mechanical methods, you only need the coordinates. But for molecular mechanics, which we're going to look into, you do need that bonded structure. You could also have various other external elements. You could have something like maybe your system is bounded by a wall and you want to keep all your particles inside a wall so you so you specify some energy function which gives you a wall that your particles kind of bounce off of and stay with inside certain coordinates um, there's various empirical parameters you could add to the system so things like if i specify a given bond how how stiff or how weak is that bond how you know, how much displacement can I get before I go up so much in energy? Uh, what are my equilibrium bond lengths? What are my equilibrium bond angles? All those sorts of things are empirical parameters we would have to specify for all of the uh, structural elements in our system. Um, and we can also have things like the total electric charge and the multiplicity, the spin state of the system. This is very important in quantum mechanics because these two quantities tell you how many electrons you have and what the spins of those electrons are. So things like you have a singlet if all of your electrons that are spin up are paired with a spin down electron. And if you have the same number of protons and electrons, then your charge is zero. And various other things, but those are the same, those are the main kinds of things that we typically think about when you're thinking about the state of a molecular system. Okay, so what are some kind of energy functions that we could have? What form could they take on? Well, depending on what your model is, it could really be anything under the sun. You can have any type of, like I just put here, mathematical algorithm or procedure. So that can take on really any form you want. That could be just some sort of logical statement, you know, some conditional if the coordinates are within a certain distance energy it goes down if they're so far away energy goes up something as simple as you know conditional logic statements you could have something that's just you know simple arithmetic you know where it's this co it's uh, the energy equals the x-coordinate and then that way you'd want the x-coordinate to be as close to zero as possible you could have things like an algebraic equation that you have to solve and a lot of quantum mechanics is a lot of linear algebra matrix algebra that you have to solve you could have things that are more complicated like calculus you could have you know like we saw for back in the quantum chemistry playlist and what we're going to look into here a lot more hartree fock theory there's uh, several integrals that you have to solve there as well uh, the hamiltonian operator has derivatives so the Schrodinger equation is an energy function, so that's an energy function that includes a lot of calculus and algebra. And maybe it just requires some kind of general or advanced numerical method, things like where you have to do some type of maybe newton raphson solver, conjugate gradient, steepest descent, some equation that you have to solve numerically where you're not getting an analytic answer, you're getting some uh, numerical or approximate answer. Okay, so from all these, you can see there's quite a diversity of energy functions and states you can have depending on what type of model you're using. So just to remind ourselves overall that those can be range from being very simple 
to being very complex. They can be equations which have exact solutions, analytic solutions, or approximate solutions, or what we would call numerical solutions, where you would just solve them to enough accuracy that you that you like. You know, if it's if you want a more accurate answer, you just solve the equations with a tighter convergence criteria. They can be quantum mechanical, they can be molecular mechanical, what we'll describe starting in the next video, or they could be some other video, various other kinds of methods, semi-empirical, density functional, all sorts of models. Um, they can be what we call ab initio, where they start from the beginning, start from first principles. Quantum mechanical methods are generally called ab initio. Or they can be empirical. They can start from experiment and try to reproduce experimental data by including various empirical parameters and tuning those parameters to reproduce experiment. And then they can also be things where you go down to the level of individual atomic positions. They can be atomistic. That's the word I wanted to use. I wanted to use atomistic, where all the atoms are represented as molecular coordinates in the state. Or they can be coarse grained, where you represent larger sections of the molecule with single kind of potentials. Where, for example, I might do a CH3 group as a single particle, or I might do a residue or an amino acid of a protein as a single particle. I might do a, a nucleotide of a DNA strand as a single particle, depending on how far coarse grained you want to go. If you have some super coarse grained model, maybe it's an entire bacterial cell that is one of the particles in your simulation. So this is a very general concept, energy functions, just any mathematical uh, algorithm which gets you from whatever you use to specify the state of your system to outputting the energy which you can use uh, in a further simulation.